Hello, Ariza Gaming here, and welcome back to another episode of Sandbox Showcase, a series where I talk about problems in Oxygen Not Included and how you can solve them easily and efficiently. So today I want to talk about the Rust Deoxidizer. So this is a machine that you might not be overly familiar with, but can be very useful as an early and mid-game oxygen source. So if we look at this machine, unlike the electrolyzer, which takes water and produces oxygen hydrogen, the rust deoxidizer takes rust and salt, and it produces oxygen, chlorine, and iron ore. And the amount of oxygen is about 66%-ish of the oxygen that you get from the electrolyzer uh, for the raw materials. But the interesting thing to note is you get metal ore out of this machine. And on maps where rust spawns in the rust biomes, you're often going to be able to find hundreds of tons of rust sitting around in that asteroid, and there's only two uses for rust. You can either put it in this machine and turn it into iron ore and oxygen, or you can melt it at around 1535 degrees C and turn it into refined iron. So if you want to turn your rust straight into refined iron, I'd honestly recommend just waiting until later in the game and just melting it in some kind of big contraption. But I think the better use for it is early game, just using it A, to solve your oxygen problem, and B, to produce a large amount of metal ore. Because a lot of asteroids that have rust biomes don't have that much metal ore on them. So it can be very handy to get a couple of hundred tons extra iron ore for you to use for what the wires or whatever you need your metal ore for. So the purpose of this build that I'm going to talk about is to separate out the oxygen and the chlorine in a power efficient manner so that you're not having to filter the gases and to put all of the input materials in, i.e. the rust and salt, and to get the iron ore out, uh, while also being space efficient and being able to fit in with your regular base layout. So what we're going to do is, we're going to clear a little section of the map here, don't mind me. Oh, there, there's going to the printing pod. Right, so yeah, we'll just put this here. I like to do this with insulated tiles because the rust machine does produce a fair amount of heat. It's important to note that the it's important to note that the raw materials, even if they go in cold, the output materials are going to be hot. They're going to be 75 degrees C. So the machine is going to generate heat. It says it generates a little bit of heat, like 1.13 kDTUs of heat, but it's going to generate more than that because the raw materials are going to be putting in. Like they get heated up when they come out as output materials. So I'm just putting these ladders here to show the four tile high layout. Uh, generally, it's quite convenient to have rooms be four tiles high for a number of buildings in the game. So this is just going to show how this bit will, this build will fit in well with this. So I'll have the insulated tile go up here. I have a little bit over here as well, and then we'll leave a gap here, and I'll talk about this later. I'll open, I'll open this bit up here for now as well. Uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to actually position the rust deoxidizer. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put two airflow tiles over here. It doesn't really matter what they're made of. You'll put those there and then you'll just want to put some relatively conductive tiles uh, on the floor. So we're going to put four granite tiles here. That should be absolutely fine. And then the rusty oxidizer machine itself goes here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put another granite tile up here. And we're going to flood this, or not flood it, we're going to submerge it with a small quantity of two different liquids. And I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so what you can do for that is you can just get your bottle emptier, you can put it here, and then you can just empty out, say, <laughs> not liquid nuclear waste, you don't need that. Say 20 kilograms of of salt water so that's just four tiles five kilograms each and then you can just do the same with regular water this room is never going to get above 75 c even if you don't cool it so you can safely use water in this build and it's not going to cause any issues so it'll look something like this and you'll notice that when uh, you've got small quantities of liquid covering this machine it's not going to overpressurize. a it's not going to overpressurize. And B, the gases are going to separate out because of this tile. The gases will spawn on this tile here with the with the dial. And they'll sep some of the gases will go down here and some of the gases will go up here. And if you don't prime this with, with gases in these rooms, 
what will happen is the oxygen will go down here and the chlorine will go up here. And I don't exactly know why this is because the chlorine generally sinks respectively to oxygen. But if you don't prime this room, the chlorine will go up here. And that's what this build is going to be designed around. We're going to design it so the oxygen all goes down here and the chlorine all goes up here. And then we'll have all the solid management in this room, as well as the dash of salt vines. And then this room down here will just be the oxygen pumps. So you dump your liquids in here. Uh, you could dump a little bit of liquid over here as well. Uh, you're going to want to have dupe access to this room uh, with the equipment in it. And I'll explain why in a minute. Um, you can literally just put the bottle empty here and dump a small quantity of liquid. And it will flow out and it will spill down here. And that's absolutely fine. You can do it that way as well. Uh, but the end result is you're going to have about 30 grams of salt water on these two tiles. Because that's the amount that will stay there due to surface tension, uh, viscosity, what have you. Uh, and you'll want to do the same with some water. So you can deliver individual bottles here and open them on this tile using the move here command. You can build the pedestal, uh, which is in the furniture tab. And you can have them deliver one kilogram of each to the pedestal. You can do it like that. That's not going to cause any issues. Uh, let me just put the salt water back. So here you go. Um, and the, the end result is that this room is going to be sealed off gas-wise, but your dupes are still going to be able to get in. They're still going to be able to access all of these tiles. We're not going to have room to put ladders over here if we put the dash of salt vines in and all the equipment. Uh, so they won't be able to walk across the room, but they will still be able to access every tile for building. But I'm going to start by uh, talking about the oxygen room. This is fairly straightforward. Uh, what you're going to want to do is want to put two gas pumps down here. And I'd actually recommend that you build these out of gold amalgam if you have it from your marsh biome, just in case you set this up at the beginning of the game and you don't have a cooling network set up yet. You could run this without cooling, but just bear in mind that all of the outputs will be at 75C. So you'll want to make these buildings out of gold amalgam if you're not going to cool it. If you are going to cool it, you can make it out of other stuff, but just be prepared for it to break if the cooling network stops. So we're gonna put two gas pumps down here for the oxygen. This produces 570 grams per second of oxygen. Uh, so one gas pump will just about handle it all, but you can have two in there. And then as the gas pressure builds up in this room, this will activate occasionally and you'll get the rest of the oxygen out. If you don't actually consume the oxygen in the pipe, you can have it uh, build up in here. This machine will never overpressurize while it's covered in the two liquids. So you can have hundreds of kilograms of oxygen in here, and then whenever you need it, you, this second pump can activate and you can just get a full pipe of gas through there. So what we'll do is we'll put some atmo sensors on these. These can be made out of lead. This room isn't going to get too hot. And we'll just hook them up like this with some lead wire. Uh, we'll set these to only pump if the gas pressure at each of these is above one kilogram. And that way they're not going to be pumping very small packets of gas. Gas pumps are notoriously power inefficient, so you want to make sure that they're pumping all the time at max volume. Otherwise, it's not worth the watts. So that's what these Atmos sensors are for. And then we've got a little bit of room here, so we're just going to stick a manual switch in here. And we're just going to use this so we can turn the rust yo uh, the oxidizer on and off without having to come in here and set it with a dupe. So once you've built all this stuff in this room and you've poured the liquids in, all you need to do is... Well, actually, let's build the power wire first. Uh, you can you can do this with regular wires in the beginning of the game. This setup is only going to draw about 300, 400 watts at a time. Uh, but I, if you have a little bit of refined metal, I just recommend building it with conductive wire anyways. This, this could be lead conductive wire. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so we're just going to bring it up here. Um, I'm going to use the dev generator for this, but... It's so little power that one dupe running on a manual generator will be able to run all this stuff constantly. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do that in a pinch. Um, I would just recommend powering it via coal or something else instead. Unfortunately, it won't power itself because it, it doesn't produce hydrogen like the, the electrolyzer setup does. But it's a relatively small amount of power consumption. And once you've got everything in here that you want, you can seal this room off. Just build some more insulated tile. And then you can use these gas pumps to just vacuum out the room. So I'm just going to connect these pumps down here and things go like this. So you'd evacuate all the other gases in this room, make your vacuum in here. Um, in fact, what I would actually recommend doing for this build specifically, if you're doing this with dash of salt lines, just recycle the chlorine. 
Uh, seal this off. Don't pour this liquid in here yet. And then pump all the gas out of the room entirely and then dump the liquid in here with another bottle emptier, say, just here. And then and then you can get both bits nice and vacuumed pretty easily. Uh, so once you've done that, the next step is putting in the dash assault lines. So we can just put some farm tiles up here on the ceiling. Uh, you can just make these with dirt, no issues there. Uh, so we're going to want five of those. Now the machine produces 30 grams per second of chlorine and each dash of salt line uh, consumes about 6 grams per second of chlorine. So you're going to want 5 in here if you want to consume all of the chlorine and recycle it. So we're just going to spawn in some seeds up here and then we'll get those delivered to the farm tiles momentarily. Yeah, just plant these in like this. And then in terms of the actual solid management, what we'll do is we'll put an auto sweeper in here. Uh, you'll want to make this out of iron. If you've got the iron ore from this machine anyway, just refine a little bit of it and make it out of iron so it won't overheat if this setup isn't being cooled. Uh, you can put that here and then you can just put your conveyor loader up here. Again, make that out of iron and you can put a chute down here and it doesn't really matter what you make this chute out of. And you'll want to hook these up to your power network as well. So that can just go like this. It's absolutely fine. These two dupes have decided to deliver all of the seeds for some reason instead of actually digging. That's fine. So now we have access to all four of those materials. So uh, we'll just set this conveyor loader to metal ore. And that is going to dump the... It doesn't really matter where you dump this, it's just wherever you want to dump the iron ore, for whatever you're going to use it for. So I can just go up there, and then this bit down here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the dev solid pumps in here, just to show you how it works. I don't think we need four of them. <laughs> uh, so let's just take this. You want to merge these all onto one line and just send it down here. And then we'll set this one to rust, we'll set this one to salt, and we'll set this one here to sand. Because uh, you do need a little bit of sand to feed these plants, for them to consume the chlorine and then eventually produce a lot more salt. But it's a relatively small amount of sand, so you should be fine. So that's going to start running. Again, we have a complete vacuum in here. So our dupes are just delivering the seeds now because they, they want something to do, apparently. Thank you, Trivaldo, you're being very useful. So the sand is being loaded into these tiles. And then the salt is going to start being delivered to the machine as well. You can see we've delivered all of the salt now. And now the rust machine is going to start working because the rust is being delivered. So you can see that's activated. If we go to the gas overlay, the chlorine shoots out up here and the oxygen shoots, up, uh, shoots down here. If you vacuum both of these rooms, you don't need to prime it with any gases. The chlorine will go up here and the oxygen will go down here. So, now, something to note is, if you have all five seeds planted, they might not necessarily grow immediately. They might start consuming the, um, the chlorine. They might start consuming the chlorine before uh, it gets to high enough pressure where they're actually growing. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that the gas pressure in here is at least 25 grams before you plant the seeds, ideally. I mean, in this case, some of them aren't fertilized with sand yet. So the chlorine should actually get to the right pressure. Yeah. So the, the dupes are actually fertilizing with sand in this case, but the machine will handle that normally just fine. What you'll probably want to do is set these to a low priority so that your dupes aren't coming in here and manually fertilizing all these things. Yeah, Travaldo's doing his best. He's going to come over here and uh, deliver the sand to that. Right, so you're done. Uh, let's actually put a a door here now so we can restrict access to this room. You're only going to want the dupes to access this room uh, to harvest the plants once they've grown. Because once they've grown, they'll keep consuming... Uh, once they've grown, they won't consume the chlorine. So... Would you guys actually just stop going in here? No. I'm going to shut this off now. You guys can just hang out, okay? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Once these plants grow... Uh, to their full capacity. They'll need to be harvested. Otherwise, they'll sit there not consuming chlorine and the chlorine will build up, which isn't necessarily the end of the world. You just want to keep the chlorine contained to this room and then these plants will recycle it into salt periodically. 
and these will grow. Now, one thing that I will say is with the conveyor delivering the solid materials in here as well, because the output materials are all going to be at 75 degrees C, A, you might want to preheat these materials to 75C. And a really good way of doing that is running that past your electrolyzers. If you're not actually cooling your electrolyzers and you're feeding them with hot water, you can run the solid rust, salt, and sand through that room and they can absorb some of that heat before you dump them in here. So that will cool down your spawn and it won't result in extra heat in here. So definitely if you've got electrolyzers in a spawn setup, run this conveyor past that and cool your spawn and and just delete that heat from the spawn. It's going to save you on cooling power. So if we look at the temperature, you can see this material is coming out hot. You are going to want to cool this somehow. What I would recommend is just putting some radiant pipe in here. It doesn't really matter what it's made of. Aluminium is the best material. And what I would do is I would just sneak a big pipe through the whole thing. Fluorine is a notoriously bad thermal conductor. So you're going to want as much conductive stuff in here as possible. You can put temperature plates in here as well if you want. Um, but one radiant aluminium pipe will usually do. So that's going to go in here. And then you'll just want to hook that up to your Thermo Aqua Tuner. Um, I don't really want to focus on the Aqua Tuning stuff in this video. But I will show you what I, what I would do. Um, just in terms of getting the loop set up. So what we'll do is we'll just put a Thermo Aqua Tuner down here. Um... To put that here the output pipe is here what we're going to do is we're going to set up a thermo sensor and automate that so it's going to plug in here and we want this we want the the coolant liquid to be cooled if it's above 20 degrees c these dash of salt vines will only grow between 20 and 50 degrees c so this room needs to be cooled down to at least 50 degrees c otherwise you're not going to be consuming the chlorine which isn't the end of the world but you do want to recycle some of that salt if these, if all five of these plants are running, they're going to they're going to reduce the salt consumption of this machine by about thirty percent. So it's worth doing, I would say. But yeah, what we'll do is we'll set that up. Um, we'll have a little bridge go over here, and then we'll plug the output of the thermo aqua tuner into this bridge here. So what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that this cooling loop prioritizes the cooled liquid over the liquid that's recirculating so then that's just going to go over here like this and what we're going to do is we're just going to put in a we're just going to put in a dev liquid pump that can just go here and i think what i'm actually going to do is we're going to bridge that on here so again we'll bridge this after if you bridge your polluted water source whatever you're going to use as your coolant after the bridge that recirculates the loop it will fill up the coolant loop to exactly the amount you want and it's not going to overfill it but you have to put it directly afterwards uh we're going to use polluted water for this that's what i usually use for all these early game coolant loops because it can go down to minus 20 it has good heat capacity uh this isn't going to be getting cooled below 20 degrees so you could use regular water for this or salt water or whatever but we're just going to use polluted water for that um and obviously how you handle your thermo aqua tuner is up to you. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm literally just going to put it in a big pool of super coolant. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to let it run. But normally you'd want a steam turbine to take the heat off of this. Put some water in here, boil it with the thermo aqua tuner. And use a steam turbine to delete that heat from the thermo aqua tuner. But that's not really the focus of this video. So now what's going to happen is we're going to get the polluted water in here. And that is going to come in. It's going to start circulating through here, absorbing the heat from your rust machine. And then eventually it's going to get all the way back to the Thermo Aqua Tuna and it's going to start cooling down. You've got to love those pipe, uh, pipe sounds. Sound design in this game is great. So that's going through, that's now going to get cooled until it's cold enough that this room is at the desired temperature. Um, I think actually what you'd want to do is you'd want to set this to like 35 or something. Because you really don't want any packets in here that are colder than the temperature that this wants to be at. And it doesn't matter if this room gets quite hot. So you can set this all between 20 to 35, just depending on what you sort of want. Put it at 25. And we'll just run this for a bit. 
Uh, so you can see the oxygen is going into this uh, setup down here. This pump is running occasionally and all the oxygen is coming out here. That is all nice and cool because of the coolant liquid running through the pipe. Uh, the oxygen is relatively conductive compared to the fluorine, but the liquids are going to be the most conductive and the granite is going to be quite conductive as well. If you have a lot of refined metal, you can use a refined metal in here. Aluminium is pretty good. Um, but obviously you're probably going to want to save a lot of that for your pipes. We can see what it looks like with some aluminium, I guess. Yeah, let's just put that here. There you go. That's all still behaving. That hasn't disrupted any of this gas equilibrium. So yeah, probably optimal to use aluminium for this. The chlorine is a really bad conductor, so you're going to want to make sure there's some conductive materials in here. Just just to take that, um, just to make sure that it's not getting too hot. And there we go. So then you can mostly just leave this room alone. If you have a radiation source and you can get the juicy fruit mutation on a dash of salt mine, it will, con it will consume a little bit more sand, but you can completely seal this off and your dupes won't have to come in here to harvest this. They'll just deal with all the chlorine. One other thing I would suggest is... This is a pretty good use for the chlorine, just recycling it into more salt for this machine. But what you can actually do is, instead of having all of these be dashed salt lines, you can remove these two and put a gas pump up here. And again, I would make this out of gold amalgam. The tool does not like me putting something there, unless I unpause it. So then we just put another Atmos sensor on here. So... Yeah, Amos sensor goes down here. You can just plug that in wherever. So let's just plug that in over here. And then you can set this to above a kilogram as well. And then what you can do with that is you can actually pump some of the chlorine out. And say you want to feed your squeaky puffs chlorine so they can turn it into bleach stone. You can send that to... Um, I'm just going to put a gas reservoir here. Yeah, here you go. Rare gas reservoir moment. So if you really want, you can pump your excess chlorine up here uh, and store it for squeaky puffs. But honestly, I would just recycle most of it. But if you're doing this, you can actually remove another one of these plants. And then we can just put a... We can just put some ladders here. And then your dupes can actually wander across this whole bit here. So that makes it a bit easier for them to come in here and, like, supply stuff and whatever. And again, you just want to hook this pump up to your network. But that's what that would look like. Um, if you want to grab some for your squeaky puffs. But if you don't, just use the five salt lines and that will consume all the chlorine. And yeah, that's that's pretty much the build. It's fairly straightforward. Um, it's, it's very similar to the spawn build that I did in my first sandbox showcase video. It's a little bit wider because you just need a little bit more space to fit all this stuff in here. Especially if you've got the five salt lines instead of the pump for your squeaky puffs because um, you're fitting all the stuff down here as well for the shipping. But um, I think it's pretty efficient. If you aren't connecting it across like this, I would recommend building these uh, builds vertically in like a column, and then your dupes can access either side for the dash salt binds, and they're not going to have any access issues. If you are doing it with the gas pump in here, what you can actually do is you can put these horizontally like you do with the spawns. And just connect each of these rooms. If you're doing that, you don't necessarily need to separate these rooms off. You can just put another salt line here instead of having this door. So you can you can have more salt lines as well, and that'll be absolutely fine. But uh, yeah, it should fit quite well into a base. But yeah, that's the build. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more sandbox showcase videos where we solve various problems. We've also done a few tier lists for this game, a few meme videos. Uh, there's more discussion of builds and memes on the Discord. And we do stream Oxygen Not Included live on Twitch on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, 7.30 to 10.30 British time. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Whiskers sends thanks to the following Twitch subscribers. Deadeye XL Grey Area Hiatus Seuss Neo Deus Machina The Max Not Binary And Uglavisk